When you hear about CRISPR, it's becoming increasingly important to think about, well, what type? Because CRISPR, from its origins in, as a bacterial immune system, has now become a huge toolbox of molecular tools that scientists can use not just to silence or knock out genes, but actually just to do things like alter their expression or make specific edits in those genes. So at its heart, CRISPR has a guide RNA and a Cas protein. The guide RNA directs the Cas protein to a specific sequence. So in its classical form, it'll direct it to a sequence of DNA. And then what happens next depends on the Cas protein, so the CRISPR-associated protein, the Cas. There are different Cas proteins, and the kind of classical one is Cas9. What Cas9 does is that when it binds to a matching site, it's actually going to cut both strands of the DNA. And now the cell has to figure out what to do next. If you don't provide it an alternative sequence, the best that it can do is just non-homologous end-joining, NHEJ, where it just tries to stitch the pieces together. It typically does a bad job, and what you end up with is a genetic knockout, so the gene becomes inactivated. However, if you provide a separate piece of DNA, you can get homologous recombination. As long as the ends of the pieces match what was there before, you're able to then get the cells to think, oh, this is a piece that was supposed to go here, and the cells stitch them together, and that way you're able to kind of switch out the sequence that was there. Then there are nickases, which the Cas protein only cleaves one strand instead of two, and lately the couple of hot things have been prime editing and base editing. And so base editing is where you go and you make a specific nucleotide change. So you only change one letter of the DNA. And this is done by having a Cas protein associated with another protein that will modify a DNA letter, trick the cells into thinking that it's a different letter. And so then when the cells replicate the DNA or when they try to fix DNA, they'll actually go and they'll change the nucleotide that was there. So you get a single letter change. There's also prime editing, which they are instead of having a separate piece of DNA providing alternative instructions, there is a longer guide RNA, and this is then going to provide a template for a reverse transcriptase that's attached to the Cas that can then go and tr reverse transcribe that RNA into DNA and incorporate that DNA when the cell does its fixing. You can do all sorts of various things with variations of the Cas protein. Some of the variations use a dead Cas9, so a catalytically inactivated Cas9. Now this Cas9 protein will still bind to that guide RNA and still take it to the specific sequence, but then what happens next depends on a protein that's associated with that dead Cas9, such as something that is going to alter the transcription of the protein, so it being made into mRNA, 